Wait, his name's actually Chris Cornell? Like Soundgarden? Hey, today we're playing Save the Date as requested by Patreon subscriber Finn Siegmund. Oop. Ring ring. I think it's a VN. I think it's actually relatively obvious at this point. <laughs> Hello? Oh, you're early. You must be calling about tonight. I meant to ask where we were meeting. I know we were planning on having dinner, but we never decided where. Where are we having dinner? Burgers, Thai food, tacos, and actually fuck off. <laughs> There's the arrows. All right. How about Thai food? Ooh, I've never had Thai. That sounds fun. I've always wanted to try Thai food. This will be fun. Are you ready for your order? I think so. This picture of Pad Thai looks amazing. I think I'll have that. What are you having? That sounds good. I'll have Pad Thai too. Excellent choice. May I compliment you on your class and taste? Eventually, dinner arrives and Felicia dri uh, dives into her meal with surprising gusto. Oh, this is delicious. We should have done this a long time ago. I'm so glad we're able to meet tonight. Do you know why I wanted to do this? No? I don't know who you are, technically. Well, she actually looks flustered for a moment. I've really wanted to ask you. Well, sorry, this is hard to say. Felicia pauses for a moment and takes a deep breath. Really hard to say. I'm not feeling... Were there peanuts in that dish or something? I don't... Oh no, you have a peanut allergy? Pad Thai has peanuts, yes. She topples face first into her food. And there goes the music. The rest of the evening is a blur of ambulances and yelling, but somehow you feel like you already know what is coming. You're not... Really surprised when the ashen-faced medical technician comes to tell you what you already basically know. Felicia had a severe peanut allergy and it killed her. What the fuck? <laughs> I've, I've been playing for like a minute. And it's like a wacky song plays like na 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 <laughs> What the fuck? I played for like a minute and she died. Okay, don't go to Thai food. How, how do you have a lethal peanut allergy and don't even bother bringing it up? Alright, skip is control. Uh, menu is escape. Preferences. Skip. Scene messages. Yeah. And then stop skipping after a choice. Alright. So, skip. Alright. Uh, burgers? They don't have peanuts and burgers. Sounds good. See you at the burger shack. Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. Everything smells so good. I had my doubts when you mentioned this place. It's out of the way, and I'm in kind of a sketchy neighborhood, but this looks great. I think I'll have the bacon burger with extra ketchup. Oh no, I'm not supposed to have pig. Why didn't anyone warn me? Now I'm not dead, but I'm excommunicated from my religion or something. Like I'm just expecting the most ridiculously heavy consequences for these food choices now. Oh, Swiss cheese with mushrooms, yes. Your meal is served, you both dig in. After a few bites, she stops eating and looks wistful. That's better than dead. My dad would have loved this place. That looks ex... Uh... I'm sorry, I just I just fully looked at the picture. That's an in and out. <laughs> That's definitely absolutely an in and out. Like they drew over a picture of an in and out. Like very clearly, it can't be mistaken for any other burger joint. It's every single element is there. Huh. My dad would have loved this place. He would have been right at home. He really loved burgers, and this place is has great ambiance. He sighs and pokes at her burger. Say nothing and keep eating. After a minute or two of poking at her food, she brightens up. She takes another big bite out of her burger. So I've been thinking lately about school and what comes after. You hear some kind of 
commotion coming from outside. Felicia cranes her neck to try and see. What's going on? Is something happening out there? It probably doesn't concern us. Suddenly there's a loud noise from outside, a succession of loud bangs and a string of fire like a string of firecrackers going off. Uh I it takes a moment for the red stain to spread it. What the f <laughs> Did she just get shot? <laughs> okay. Is this like the time traveler's wife or whatever it's called? Where it's like or the time machine story where like they're trying to save this one lady from dying and she won't stop. She just always finds a way to die. It takes you a moment for the red stain a spreading across her shirt to register. Felicia looks down in uncomprehending shock. I think I've... I've been shot? Then, ever so slowly, she crumples into the booth. You're vaguely aware of more sounds of gunfire from outside, but all you can hear is Felicia's labored breathing, each ragged breath sounding louder than anything else in the world. It might have been minutes or centuries later when the ambulance arrives. A kind man with sad eyes loads her into the gurney and rushes her off. He tells you not to worry and that everything will be alright, but you both know he's lying. You heard the ragged breathing stop, and you saw the light fade from her eyes. You never do find out what caused the gunfight in the street. Some gang scuffle, or a drug deal gone wrong, or something. All you saw was the terrible aftermath. <laughs> it's got a fucking game over screen. <laughs> Okay, I didn't know what I was signing up for here, but okay. All right, man. You know what? Actually, I don't think we should meet up tonight. She seems hurt that you canceled your plans. When you see her the next day, she's friendly enough, but there's a barrier between you now. You remain friendly acquaintances, but as far as that's as far as it ever goes, you never do manage to ask her to dinner again. Eventually, she starts seeing someone else. Years later, why is the music cutting out like as if she died? Like it's fine. Years later, they have started life together and extremely happy. You try not to envy them, but sometimes you wonder if things might have gone differently. Yeah, she could have died, or other other died. <laughs> it seems like it, this seems way better, honestly. Oh no, we go on with our lives, and nobody has PTSD or a case of the deads. All right. All right. Apparently, tacos—the last thing I'd want to eat, honestly. I don't. I don't like tacos. Hooray for taco night! This is a good idea. Everything is better with tacos. No. I've heard good things about this place, and I heard they got me a new, I got a new chef recently too. And I really like how they're out in the docks like this. It's like we're eating right on the water. That was not, that would be a, da a bad place to eat. Where do you want to sit? Well, obviously she wants to be out here on the water, right? Out on the patio, of course. The tables outside are popular, but your server manages to find a free one for the two of you. You take your seats and start looking at the menu. Okay, let's have some tacos. Do you have any recommendations? I hear their fish tacos are amazing, but I'm open to other options. Let's see, I know that she can't eat peanuts. Nobody's immune- nobody's- Nobody gets killed by fish, right? Fish tacos, you're right, they're to die for. You've convinced me. I'll have them too. You convinced me. This is a lot of feedback loop. <laughs> I hope I don't sound obsessed to you, but for some reason I'm just really excited about tacos tonight. I'm not normally this obsessive, honest. It's almost like I've lived two parallel lives where I die horribly and one where I'm happily married. Now I'm stuck with you. Did you, do you ever get like that? Obsess over some particular thing you want to the exclusion of everything else? Uh, if we... <laughs> you mean you? <laughs> Not really, I'm pretty easy going. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh, what's that? She points out the window. Are those dolphins? I think those are dolphins. You follow her as she runs to the railing and looks out over the ocean. Do not get eaten by dolphins or somehow like fall over the railing and hit your head or whatever the hell's gonna happen now. It is dolphins. Oh, I'm so glad we came here tonight. This is awesome. Have you ever seen anything quite like it? No, this is incredible! She gazes out at the picturesque scene for a moment longer, and then several things happen all at once. God damn it. Whoa, what's happening? Too quickly for you to react, you somehow with agonizing slowness, the railing, and in fact the whole patio collapses into the sea. 
Felicia tries to jump to her safety as soon as she feels everything begin to move, but she's not quite quick enough. You lose sight of her in the churning water amidst all the debris of the deck. This is the last time you saw her. The currents near there are known to be treacherous. They never did manage to find the body. All right. So this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing today. Okay, so I like that there's a new dialogue acknowledging how fucky everything is. Change in plans, we can't go out to dinner tonight, it's too dangerous. What do you mean too dangerous? Is this some kind of weird joke you're playing on me? I can never tell when you're joking, when you, or when you really mean something. Come with me if you want to live, really. Go out for a drive? Yeah, I wonder how she'll die there. Uh, let's just see it. Well, I was just thinking maybe we'd go for a drive or something instead of dinner. That might be fun after, but before we do that, I'm kind of hungry. And you did promise me we'd meet somewhere for dinner tonight. So how about if we go to dinner first and, and drive after? No, seriously, we can't do that. You might die. Is this some kind of weird death threat? What's going on? You're kind of starting to creep me out. Look, I don't... Look, there's a lot I don't know about what's going on. But I do know this. If we go out for dinner tonight, one or maybe both of us are going to end up dead. Okay, this is all pretty weird. I mean, you seem pretty insistent that dinner tonight would be disastrous. And I feel like I'd be an idiot to just ignore someone talking about me dying. But this isn't the kind of thing that happens in real life, you know? Someone I've known for a while just coming up and telling me that I'm going to die tonight? I mean, what's going to happen? What makes you think I'm going to die? We're going to dinner for goodness sake, not a war zone. What's the worst that could happen at a simple dinner? Well, those are all the options so far, but this one, it reveals the peanut allergy that I might not know that she has yet, so it might reveal the secret information. Well, you might end up dead from a peanut allergy accident. Ha! Huh. You worry too much. That's clearly not going to happen. Where'd you even come up with that? Have you just been sitting home today coming up with things that go wrong tonight? Lighten up! We're just having dinner. There's not a whole lot that can actually go wrong at dinner. No, really, you're going to die. What can I do to convince you this is a bad idea? Okay, let me turn it around then. What can you do to convince me that going to d dinner is a bad idea? Sitting here at home after a completely near-death experience-free day, I'm hard- it's hard to imagine anything really bad happening like you're saying. So what can you say to make me believe that you- a that actually I'm in terrible danger? And somehow you're the only one who knows anything about it. Well, how about this? Go pick a random number or phrase or something. There's a pause, and the sound of someone rifling through pages of a book. Okay, I'll play along. I'm not sure what this will prove, though. I have a book here. I just opened to a random page. Now what? Now tell me what page you're on. Okay, are we doing some kind of fortune cookie thing here? I'm on page 144. The first sentence is, What's pulling wobblers mean? He said. Not sure what that says about our future, but there it is. So, now what? Actually, I think I know what. I think I'm going to go have dinner. I think you've successfully convinced me that we shouldn't have dinner together. I'm just too weirded out now. We'll talk about this later, I guess. This has all been very strange. After a few moments, there's a sound of an airplane getting closer and closer, followed by one of the loudest noises you've ever heard. What the fuck? She got hit by a plane? <laughs> The TV in the background switches to an emergency report about the plane crash and fires that are happening right now. Even before the news confirms it though, you have a pretty good idea exactly who the plane crashed on top of. You didn't even get to have a date and it still ended in disaster. <laughs> uh, this is like accidentally in the Halloween spirit. In a way that I didn't expect. Alright. You can't go, it's too dangerous. You'll die. It's not funny if you're trying to make a joke. Alright, 
So I get what's going on here. I can use the information now. So I need to retrace my steps. Okay, you open to page 144. The top of the page reads, What's pulling wobblers mean, he said. There's a stunned silence for a moment. How did you... Are you... Looking into my room somehow? And quick save. <laughs> Progress has been made. That's... That's really not cool, okay? Really not cool. I think we're done here. I'm not having dinner with a weirdo stalker. Good night. After a few moments, there's a sound of an- God damn it, she still died? No! You tricked me. <laughs> I thought we were good. Uh, let's just see her die in new interesting ways then. Yay, tacos! Let's go inside the house in the building where there's a free booth. You're directed to a booth and the server brings you out water and menus. Okay, let's have some tacos. Do you have any recommendations? I hear their fish tacos are amazing. Enchilada? I really like the chicken. Hmm, tempting. But not tempting enough fish tacos for me, please. <laughs> I hope you I don't sound obsessed with you, but for some reason I'm just really excited about tacos tonight. I'm not normally as obsessive, honest. You ever get this obsessed? Yeah, suddenly I'm really obsessed, huh? Oh, what's that? She points out the window. Are those dolphins? I think those are dolphins. Fuck. Uh... Actually, this is important. Take two steps to your left now. She turns around, obviously a bit surprised at your tone, but obediently takes a step to the left. What? Was I in the way, or...? Holy crap! The portion of the deck where she was just standing abruptly collapses into the water. Under the weight of no one? Because no one's... Why would it collapse? Okay. I... I was almost standing there. I... Holy crap, that was close. Quick save. I'm just trying to find an anchor point for progress, even though I don't even entirely know how saves work in this game. I could have died. How do you know the deck was going to give? That it was safe over here? I'm actually a wizard. I'm from the future. I'm a psychic. I reloaded from a saved game. <laughs> One of these is the truest. I guess I got lucky. I reloaded from a saved game. What's that supposed to mean? I don't understand what you just said. What exactly do you mean reloaded? I mean, this is a video game. You died. I got a game over. And so I hit reload so I could try different choices. It sounds kind of far-fetched, but wow. It would be nice to just be able to hit reload on your mistakes, huh? Wouldn't it? So don't take this the wrong way, but I still think you're kind of full of it. Although I do really appreciate the part where, you know, save my life and all. But I don't understand why you'd then turn around and give me such an implausible explanation for how you did it. As opposed to all the plausible explanations I could give you. The whole thing just feels like one big setup or a super elaborate practical joke. Haha, <laughs> yeah, welcome to Jackass 4, where we almost kill people! Like, as soon as I do something embarrassing, like saying that I believe you, hidden cameramen will jump out, and there'll be streamers. And the next thing I know, I'm the next YouTube sensation, gullible girl with 6 million hits. Hey, you can make good money that way. You, you can make good- that's good money. That's like- that's like $6,000. That's like... Rent for a few months. <laughs> Okay, then. Here's what we'll do. Think of a word. An interesting one. Okay, got one. Now what? Now tell me what it is. What? This is a pretty lame trick. I mean, the word is... Peristalsis, but just asking me for it straight up isn't very impressive. How is it supposed to convince me? It's not. I just need to know for next time. What's that supposed to mean? That for next time what? Oh, it doesn't- you're about to die. Sorry, I couldn't save you. We don't- I actually don't know that yet. But it's probably true. For the next time I reload my save. What? You think you could just back up and reload your life every time you make a mistake? Okay, then go ahead. I think you're full of it. I've seen you make mistakes before. You live with them, the same as the rest of us. If you think you could just back up and fix everything, then go ahead. I'll wait. Well, you can't tell, obviously. I'm waiting. Are you just gonna stand, sit there all night or now, or what? I thought you were going to reload or whatever. 
I'm going to. Give me time. Let me do it. I need to let me do it. I can't do it when you're watching. <laughs> I'm just waiting for an actual game over to make sure I haven't missed any important details from this conversation. What does that even mean? If I say game over to you, does that count? This is the weirdest dinner ever. It's fun though. Suddenly you're interrupted by screams and the sound of a lot of things breaking. Your first thought is that suddenly there are snakes everywhere. Soon enough though, you realize your mistake. It's actually just tentacles. Countless tentacles coming from every window and opening. Boy, I'm sorry, did the Kraken arrive? Boiling up and ro from the rolling waters beneath the restaurant. Not snakes at all, you think to yourself, as Felicia's pulled it out a window with a tentacle wrapped around her over a foot in diameter. Just a sea monster. Okay. Our character's completely numb at this point to the deaths. Like, they're just like, huh? Yeah, okay, sure. Alright, quick load. I reloaded from a saved game. This is a video game. Think of a word. Okay, it was peristalsis. Can we move on now? What? How did you... That's really eerie. So, okay, let's assume that I accept for a moment that there's at least one... That there's at least enough weird crap going on that I should take things at face value. What is this? What is all this about? <laughs> You're a character in a video game? I'm trying to win, but when you die, I get a game over? <laughs> Jesus. You can just tell them they're not real. I'm trying to figure out how to stop you from dying all the time. But didn't you already do that? You already saved my life tonight. Aren't we in the clear now? This is the t Oh, this is terrifying. <laughs> ah, it's like that part in like... All you need- was it all you need is kill? Well, no, uh, Live, Die, Repeat, or Edge of Tomorrow. God, that- why does one story have three names? <laughs> uh, we're like, this is the frost I've gotten so far. I'm like, I don't want to hear that! <laughs> that means we're gonna die! I don't know what happens here. This is the first time I've gotten this far. Ha! <laughs> so you get to experience this fresh like the rest of us mortals? Well, guess we'll see what happens next. What's our next move? We should... We should probably try to go somewhere safer. Okay, let's go. You finish up your tacos and head out. I accidentally skipped one line of dialogue, but it probably wasn't that important. You haven't made it more than a foot from the door, though, when a car crashes into the front of the restaurant? Unfortunately, the two of you are directly in its path, because of course you were. You're flung to the side, but Felicia's not so lucky. The ambulance arrives quickly, but she doesn't even make it to the hospital before succumbing to eternal bleeding and a punctured lung. That's a really fast toss. That, 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 that ambulance is just always there. Alright. I like that the quick save quick load is responsive and that it doesn't load it doesn't load to a, a save state that doesn't remember the do the conversations I've already had or anything. Actually no, you're still gonna die. This is this is kind of a bad day for you. Oh. That sucks. Well, I guess in that case, I don't have to feel guilty about ordering dessert at least. Hey, this isn't some trick or something, is it? I mean, the part where you saved my life and then knew that word I was thinking was kind of convincing. But I'm going to be kind of mad if it turns out that I blew my diet for nothing. Suddenly interrupted by screams and the sound of a lot of things breaking. Snakes! Right, we do need to leave for the crack before the crack, but we need to dodge the car. Yep. All right. Oops. Eh, eh. There we go. Alright, uh... I'm just trying to make you stop dying. I don't know if that choice matters, but maybe it does. It might just be a series of jokes. Well, not if we stay here. Staying here is bad. What should we do then? Oh. Do you know somewhere safer? No, leaving gets you killed too. Huh. That leaves me kind of screwed, doesn't it? So what's your plan, then? See how far this branch goes and then reload? Look for clues so that when I reload, maybe we won't get here. Oh. 
I guess that sounds reasonable. I'm not totally happy about the me dying part of this plan. Heck, I'm still not totally sure that there is, this is some kind of trick you've been playing. Like, I'll get all convinced that I'm going to die, and then you'll shout, Surprise! And I'm gonna feel like an idiot. I... I kind of hope that's it, actually. It's fun to imagine that my life just got a lot more exciting, but it's not very fun to imagine that my life just got a lot more short. Let me know if you find any clues, okay? Suddenly, you're interrupted by screams and the sound of a lot of things breaking. Man, there are so many games that use the same premise as Xeroscape, but do it better by not being fucking annoying. <laughs> Oh no, I'm at the beginning on accident. Oop, there we go. Alright, that's eerie. I don't know if we can actually solve this problem, though. You're a character in a video game. I'm trying to win, but when you die, I get a game over. Oh. I guess that sucks for you. I'm... Not sure if you're expecting me to feel sympathy here now, or what? So, now that I didn't die, what does that mean? To, does that mean you win now? No, looks like you die on this branch, too. Oh, really? That's kind of crappy. Will you reload and try again? Yeah, probably. I still have stuff to try. Well, that's good. See you around, I guess. And snakes. <laughs> the snakes part is funny. <laughs> I don't know if there's a way to fix this. We should be able to just avoid the fucking car, but I don't know if there's an option to actually do that. Pretty sure that all these choices don't matter, so let's save again. There we go. I don't, I'm, I'm tired of picking the part about her being real or not. Staying here is bad news. Let's find out. Snakes are everywhere. What? Staying here is bad news. You know somewhere safer? Maybe? You don't even get to try to leave again. I can't get the car crash to happen again. Huh. Do start over from the beginning, why not? Um Thai food. Maybe I can stop her from eating the Actually, Pad Thai has peanuts in it. What? For real? Oh, wow. I'm glad you told me. So it's a very easy thing to fix, but when I first encountered this choice, I didn't know that we were going to get new choices where our character canonically has the information. So at the time, I was like, oh, I gotta pick the branch that doesn't get them killed, but actually we're playing... We're doing the Zero Escape thing where our character knows all of the timelines and is using that information. Also, Omen Sight, which was also better than Zero Escape. For real? Oh, for real? Oh, wow. I'm glad you told me. I'm actually, like, super allergic to peanuts. That could have really been bad. Actually, it's kind of silly how they, how they found out. When I was little, I saw elephants on TV and decided I wanted to be an elephant when I grew up. So I ate some peanuts that my dad had left out. And my face swelled up and got all puffy, and I was convinced that this was me turning into an elephant, just like I'd planned. So I stumbled in the living room with my face like twice its normal size and slurred up, Ma Look, Mama, look, Dad, I'm gonna be an elephant. After I got back from the emergency room, we laughed about that for years. She looks almost wistful about her dead dad, who's dead, probably. But how'd you know I was allergic? I don't think I've ever told anyone at school. I'm psychic. <laughs> no, ser I'm being serious, you dork. How did you know? No, real. Like ESP and stuff. Here, I'll prove it. Think of a number. They're all right. I'll play along. Okay, got one. What's your guess? 77. Ha! Gotcha. It's negative eight. No one ever guesses negative numbers. Suddenly, the restaurant's full of yelling, and there's a shiny piece of metal flying everywhere. The last... Your last thought is something like, why are there ninjas in a Thai restaurant? Ninjas are Japanese. Before you hit before you hit on the head with a nunchuck and everything goes dark, they're actually ninjas. You're not joking. You never do find out what the attack was all about. Some kind of underworld power struggle? Oddly themed gang warfare? Sinister Naruto cosplayers? In the end, it doesn't really matter. Twelve people died in the attack. Believe it. Felicia was one of them. 
that you never found out what it was about. Well, there are patterns here. Alright, we're gonna fix Thai food, goddammit. Alright, so we definitely have to deal with the peanuts thing. And quick save. Haha. <laughs> I'm from the future. I wow, really? Are you serious? That's a pretty incredible claim. Do you have any way to prove that? I mean, I'm really grateful that you just saved my life and all, but this whole thing's pretty weird. How do I know you're really from the future? I I'm just I would just be guessing though. The next season of Game of Thrones is not very good. <laughs> when did this come out? When? <laughs> oh no, wait. Yeah, I, I, I looked up, uh, when I was trying to figure out how long this game was, I looked up YouTube videos to see their durations, and they were like over, just over an hour long, and one of them was from five years ago, I think. Oh, he doesn't even know. He doesn't even know the future that's ahead of him. He was like, wow, Game of Thrones, like, season three or whatever might not be very good. It's like, dude, you don't understand. The next season, the next season of Game of Thrones is not very good. You take that back. Don't even joke about that. Oh. <sighs> Let's just say, I hope you didn't name your daughter Khaleesi. There's an awkward silence. For a moment, the only sound is the hustle and bustle of the restaurant, punctuated by a brief clatter as one of the servers stumbles and drops a stack of plates. Felicia seems not to notice. I'm feeling kind of rattled from tonight. Anyway, let's let's go home. I'll call you tomorrow. I... Wow. So... Well, I, I said, uh, that has peanuts in it, and they're like, I'm from the future. Game of Thrones is gonna have a bad season, and she's like... Tonight's ruined. <laughs> Them's fighting words, apparently. You finish your Thai food and head out. You haven't made more, it more than a foot from the door, though, when a car crashes into the front of the restaurant. Unfortunately, the two of you are directly in its path. You are flung to the side, but Felicia is not so lucky. The ambulance arrives quickly, but she doesn't even make it to the hospital. It's the, the fucking punctured lung thing again? That car is a homing missile. Alright, back to the reloaded save game. Uh... I mean, oh, I picked the wrong choice again, didn't I? What? I said I had ESP before. I mean, this is a video game. You died, I got a game over, so I hit reload so I could try different choices. It's okay, that's all the same dialogue, though. Think of a word. Peristalsis. Oh, they stay the same. You, you think that the different branch would lead to her being a different mood or something? Maybe she just really likes the word peristalsis. What? How did you... That's really eerie. Oh, right, we've already done this before too, right? I need you to help me solve a puzzle. I think I know what to do, but you keep accusing me of being a crazy stalker. <laughs> Seriously, you're serious. What in the world were you doing to make me think you were a stalker? I told you things I picked up from other save load sessions, but you figured I must have been stalking you to know them. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. I am pretty paranoid, and if you dumped that on me all at once, I'd probably freak out. I mean, I'm kind of freaked out as it is, but I'm at least going to the point where I'm willing to accept that something weird's going down, you know? So, I guess the trick is, uh, how do you convince me to trust you in a hurry? It's kind of a tough one. I guess you need to be able to tell me something non-threatening, but also mysterious enough to pique my interest. So, even if I wasn't sure how you did it, I'd be interested enough to play along, huh? And if I'm calling you a crazy stalker, then it would need to be something that you couldn't possibly know, even if you were stalking me. So... Hmm. Let me think. Hmm. This is hard. Maybe something totally random, like, I don't know, your favorite professional wrestler. Seriously? I can't tell if you're joking or not. She shows you her backpack. On the back, you can see it has the hand-embroidered letters reading Macho Man Randy Savage Forever. It's alright, yeah, that wouldn't be too hard for someone to guess. I'll see if I can't think of something better. Oh, 
I've got an idea. Is she, is she gonna die right now? I've had a sort of secret name for one of my favorite places, actually. It's up on Moore's Hill, outside of town. I don't think I've ever told anyone this, but in my head, at least, I always called it the local Hogwarts pickup stop. I may have had fantasies about being carried off to Hogwarts when I was little. Don't judge me. Anyway, I'm nearly positive I never told anyone about it. What will, will that do? I hope so. Guess we'll find out. I hope it works. I mean, obviously, I guess. Tell me if there's anything else I can do. And ninjas. <laughs> you know, like you do. Alright, we can do this. Aristalsis. Solve the puzzle. Oopsie. Boop. Okay. I need to figure out how to stop you from dying all the time. Well, not if we stay here. Staying here is bad news. Oh, what should we do then? I will never know. Do you know we're somewhere safer? Maybe. Let's find out. I didn't get. I didn't get to leave. Okay. Oh, maybe I tell her the secret on the phone at the beginning. It's too dangerous. Actually, there's a slight change in plan. Meet me at the local Hogwarts pickup stop and I'll tell you all about it. Why can't you tell me now? Wait. How do you even know about the local Hogwarts pickup stop? Are we talking about the same place? I'm... Hmm. Let me think. No, I'm positive. I've never told anyone about that. I didn't even write it in my diary. There's literally no way you could know about that. That thing, that thing you just said. It's not scientifically possible. You are not scientifically possible. But you've got me really curious now. Something weird is clearly going on around here, and it involves my secret Hogwarts pickup stop. So I aim to get to the bottom of this. Okay, so here's what we'll do. I'll go to that spot now, and you'll come and meet me there. If we end up at the same spot, the spot which there is no possible way that you know about, then you will have a lot of explaining to do. There's a click as the phone is hung up. You head directly out to Moore's Hill, only to find that Felicia's gotten there ahead of you. Given that she lives further away, you assume that means she was in a hurry. The hill is peaceful, and the stars are just starting to come out. You can see the whole town spread out in front of you. Felicia doesn't say anything until you approach, and doesn't even seem to be looking at you. Only after you sit down next to her does she finally acknowledge your presence. Alright, I'm here. And you have some explaining to do. Let's start with the big question. Just what exactly is going on? Tell me the truth. Everything here, including you, is a video game that I'm playing. Go on. How does that explain you knowing things I've never told anyone? You did tell me. In an earlier playthrough. So it was me that told you, and I just don't remember it, because it didn't happen in this session or something. I guess that makes sense in a Twilight Zone sort of way. So what's all this about? This game, I mean. What are you trying to do in it? You keep dying in stupid ways, and then the game ends, and I'm trying to figure out how to keep you alive. Oh. That's pretty dark. Does that mean I wouldn't have survived if we'd gone to dinner like we planned? What exactly would have happened in the dinner? This is the most feasible one, because all, all the other ones are confusing, but this one's really clear. Because it also reveals another secret that she hasn't said before. Well, in one of them... He died from eating peanuts. Yeah, I guess I am allergic. Wait a minute. From the way you said that... Exactly how many times have you had to watch me die? 
Oh my god, it's is the game keeping the game's keeping score. So far, 15 times in seven different ways. Jeez. I had no idea and you, you counted each one. No, the game just gave me that number and I'm trusting that I got it right. Oh. I can't decide if that makes the whole thing more macabre or less. So, let me get this straight. You're playing a game, a game in which I seem destined to die if we go out to dinner. So this time, you convinced me to come out here instead of going to dinner, because if we go to dinner, I'm basically doomed. So what does that mean now, quick save? <laughs> Since we didn't go to dinner, am I in the clear? I don't know yet, let's find out. Fair enough. Guess we'll just see where this one lands us. So what now? I guess we just talk and see what happens. This is all too big to take in at once, almost. I'm kind of out of my depth here. She laughs suddenly. I was going to say that I've never been in this situation before, so I'm not really sure how to react. But if what you're saying is true, then I've been in this situation a lot of times so far. I still don't know how to react, though. I'm, I'm kind of in shock. I'm going on autopilot. I really wanted to not believe you about any of this, but somehow, I know you're telling me the truth. Well, here we are. We are successfully, we have successfully cheated death, even if it's only for a little bit. What should we talk about? The night's silence surrounds you. The time is about right. Check out the Thai restaurant. For a moment, neither of you can really see anything amiss, but then a motion catches your eye. Felicia obviously sees it too. At first it just looks like shadows flowing from rooftop to rooftop. What are... are those... ninjas? I'm confused now. Okay. Well... I guess the balcony still fell even when she wasn't standing on it. So like... This is like some kind of like global calamity that's happening tonight, apparently. Like, my first reaction was that, oh, these are like weird targeted assassinations. Like, time is choosing to kill her in a Final Destination sort of way. But now those things are still happening when she's not hap when she's not there. So this, so like, in, just like, canonically, today is nuts. Yeah, if we'd had Thai food, you would've been killed when they attacked the restaurant. But... That's stupid. Ninjas are Japanese. Why would they show up at a Thai restaurant? This game of yours is kind of absurd, you know. The ninjas leap from rooftop to rooftop almost eerily in the fluidity of their motion. When they reach the roof of the Thai restaurant, they regroup and then, in one smooth movement, flip over the roof and into the windows. I'm just thinking of the beginning of the bouncer now, when they do that at the bar. The faint sound of yelling reaches you atop the hill. Suddenly there's a light and movement in the sky, a moment later, another, then the sky is full of them. Are we about to get killed by a meteor? Shooting stars, raining from the sky, your own personal celestial fireworks display. Oh, this is beautiful. Did you know these would be here? Is this why you picked this spot? She gazes up in silent wonder. If memory serves, things should be going down at the taco place with pallets right about now. The sea monster, apparently. Also, a car crashes into the the front of all of these businesses? She looks out toward the water. After a moment, she gives a small gasp. The taco palace is covered in motion. At first, it's difficult to tell exactly what's going on, but then your brain starts to piece together what you're seeing. The entire building is covered in tentacles. Livid green in the harsh illumination of the outdoor lamps. From the thrashing of the water, it's clear that they are attached to something truly massive. It never becomes visible, though. Instead, the Taco Palace's supports buckle, and with a groan, the whole building is pulled into the churning water. Felicia's quiet, watching it sink under the waves. You know, I never thought I'd say this, but some of the, these ways I apparently die are straight out of B-movies. One of the shooting stars catches your eye. It looks especially bright. 
Oh, wow, look at that one. With a monstrous roaring noise, it gets bigger and bigger. There's a flash and a boom that you feel through your feet as much as your ears. When you can see again, there's a smoking crater. Oh, centered almost exactly where Felicia was sitting. You guys weren't... You guys weren't close to each other enough to get hit by a meteor? It's a video game. Her hat, still on fire, gently drifts to the ground at your feet. It's the only thing that survived the meteor's impact. Son of a bitch. Oh, I didn't- I can't stop the death. Ah, I don't have any other saves. I gotta get all the way there again, and then dodge the meteor, I guess? Updater saved to be earlier, I guess. He did tell me. Keep dying in stupid ways. Occasionally get killed by ninjas. Wait, seriously? This game's kind of campy, isn't it? Wait a minute. From the way you said that, how many times have you died? <laughs> 17 times in 8 different ways. <laughs> my, my, my total's increased. Oh. That was a new one. I think I just told her to go on the other side of the bench. Oh. Okay. More cheating death, I assume. So what would it be this time? What, and spoil the surprise? Fine. Keep me in suspense. See if I care. She moves over to the opposite side of the bench. So if that death is averted, what kills me after that? Or am I in the clear? And I think that's probably a good quick save moment. I don't know yet. This is new to me too. Oh, exciting. Also bad news. But given that I've already died several times today, you'll understand if I remain a bit on edge. The night's silence surrounds you. Hi. Tacos. Well, that was exciting. You even warned me and everything, and it, st it was still scary. I guess the meteor just landed. The shooting stars continue their silent, fiery cascade across the sky. Oh, what's that? Look, the stars are changing color. You look up and realize that she's right. Now the shooting stars are changing. Where before they were just quick white scratches against the sky, and now they are slower streaks of different colors. They seem to be moving more slowly as well. One of the larger ones passes almost directly overhead. Looks a little odd, though. It's almost like... Oh, come on. Flying saucers? Seriously? I don't mean to criticize, but this game of yours is not even pretending to take itself seriously anymore. At that moment, there is a blinding green light, and a sound not unlike a giant rubber band twanging. A shaft of light lances down from one of the saucers overhead and bathes you both in greenish radiance. You have just enough time to hear Felicia's mutter, Seriously? Before you're both reduced to stardust by the alien's cosmic rays. Alright. They're trying harder to kill us now. Killing us with space. Actually, let's talk about this game. I'm hoping you can help me figure out what to do next since I'm running out of ideas. Okay, I confess a certain amount of interest in this topic. Where do you want to start? I wish I knew what the soul was about. Huh. That's a pretty big question. I assume you mean the game you're playing, but you do have to admit, game or no game, it's the right kind of question to be pondering on a hilltop, watching shooting stars. Heck, I can't see the game. I mean, I see the absurd things that have been going on tonight, and your explanation rings true and all. But from my point of view, it's I'm not in a game, and it's still a good question. Maybe the answers are the same. You're basically asking why do bad things happen, right? That's something people have been asking since forever. Maybe. But the bad things seem pretty darn determined in your case. Yeah, I guess they do, don't they? Maybe we're asking the wrong question, then. After all, the game is clearly about something. I don't know what the game looks like from your end, but from mine, well... 
I can't see anyone going through the trouble of making a game as weird as this without having something on their mind that they wanted to say. Say, what does the game look like to you anyway? To me, it just looks like, you know, life? What's it like for you? I set up like a visual novel. I see pictures and I pick choices from a menu. Oh, sounds pretty low budget. That's too bad. If I'm not actually real, and my whole existence is actually a lie and all that, it'd be nice to at least know it was like a high-budget lie with nice graphics. Oh, what's that? The, char the stars are changing color. Oh, I, I should have loaded. Why do you think you keep dying? Hey, that's kind of a personal question, she giggles. I don't know. I'm not really sure how to answer that. I mean, I haven't exactly been kicking over tombstones or tripping old gypsy ladies or anything lately. I can honestly say that this is a bit outside of my experience, so I don't really have any idea why it keeps happening. How would you even go about diagnosing something like that? Excuse me, doctor, but can you tell me why I'm doomed? I mean, I don't know. Let's, let's think about this. How does it usually work in video games? Maybe I'm just supposed to die a tragic death, like Eris or something. Fucking spoilers. Oh wow, that's, that's literally... You can literally say that. Oh come on, the game's nearly old enough to vote. It's also about to get a remake that probably wasn't announced when this game was made. The statute of limitations is clearly up on that one. Is her name Eris? I thought her name was Aerith. I don't remember. Anyway. Ares. Spoilers, Ares dies also. <laughs> In a different game. Anyway, maybe it's like that. I'm supposed to die in order to, in order to, you know, embolden you, strengthen your resolve, so you can complete your epic quest. <laughs> but on the other hand, if the game always ends right after I die, and if there's a bunch of ways I can die, then that does seem to imply that you're supposed to find a way to avoid it. She seems lost in thought for a moment, watching the falling stars streak across the sky. I suppose, I guess... Don't take this the wrong way, but you could you could say I keep dying because of you, but on one hand, you could say I keep dying because we haven't figured out how to save me yet, but on the deeper level, you could say I keep dying because you keep playing. That's the that's I, but I've made that point has been made by me and other people in so many playthroughs. The idea that the very existence, like the very act of summoning the game into being, is itself the cause of all the suffering that happens within it, like pathologic. Both, I think both games made that kind of reference. I think the board game made that fucking reference, actually. Uh, and somebody referenced it early in a game we played recently, but I don't remember what that was anymore. Oh, we were talking about that in Monster Hunter. Yeah, which barely even applies. For example, if you stopped after the first time I died, then I would have only died once. I'm not saying that's preferable, but what would, it, uh, what would happen to me, to the world... If you just stop playing. I don't know, I could go delete this from my hard drive right now, we'll find out. But I stay dead? What if you quit the game before I died? What happens to the characters in the story if the storyteller stops before he's done? You fall silent again, watching the shooting stars. Oh, what's that? Look, the stars are changing color. Blip. Oh, I keep forgetting to load. So I keep having to do this again. There we go. This is a fun conversation. I wish I could figure out how to win this. Do you have any ideas? I don't know. I mean, you've done a reasonable job so far, right? Apparently you've saved me from a lot of things that might have happened. So I guess you're doing okay so far. Yeah, but that's just me figuring out how to not lose. I still don't know how to win. Hmm. That's true, I guess. Although I guess one question is, what do you mean, win? What would winning a game like this mean? What exactly are you looking to get out of this? An ending different from all the others. Ideally, where you don't die. Are you really just waiting for the game to pat you on the head and say, Well done, you finally did the right thing? Hmm. Well, I'm trying to make you not die. You kind of skipped over that part. Well, how about this? I'm part of the game, right? Can I do it? Here. Congratulations. 
A winner is you. You've beaten the game. Well done. I assume that made the message you were looking for show up on your screen. Does that count? No. Not really. That's too bad. I guess I'm not official enough or something? I'd go grab my top hat and monocle, but I doubt I have time at this point. So... You seem convinced that it's even possible to win this game. How do you know that good ending even exists? There's kind of an implicit contract when someone gives you a puzzle that it has a solution. Hmm, it's usually true, I guess. I wonder if the author of this game agrees with you. I guess you could make a puzzle that was missing a piece or something, if you were trying to make a statement. God, ah, uh, Monte Crypto. Ah, uh, memories. That game technically had solutions, but it felt like we were literally ha handed puzzles with no solutions. That video was a nightmare. Monte Crypto, huh. Like a box of jigsaw puzzles. Pieces, uh, missing a single piece. As a pretentious art installation. I don't know. Does this game feel pretentious to you? Not really. Maybe that's not it then. This game's kind of my jam as far as writing goes. Except for some of the really dumb meme jokes you can make in response to the situations. Which are like, I come on man. She leans back and goes quiet for a moment. Although, I guess if you have a box full of jigsaw puzzles and you're missing a piece, the message might just be, look outside the box. Oh, uh, what's that? Look! The stars are changing color. And load. Load? Oh. Oh, I did load. I just didn't notice the change because we're still on the screen. I wonder if there's something I can do in the game files or something, because there's a lot of indie games that like to make play that trick. What am I missing here? You can you can definitely hear the the background noise loop a lot. Well, according to you, you're missing. According to you, you're missing. What you're missing is the answer to a puzzle. Although, if you want my opinion, I think you might also be missing a clear idea of what exactly it will look like when you find it. But let's think through it. You've gotten this far by saving and loading your game to make sure that you never make mistakes, right? Are you worried now that I'll die anyway, no matter what choices you make? If you've reached the end of what you can accomplish with good choices, then all that's left are the bad choices, right? What else can you do, right? If your choices are all bad ones, then you either have to pick one anyway, or stop playing by the game's rules. She nervously fiddles with her hat for a moment. You didn't have a hat, did you? Oh, wait, no, yeah, it fell when you got evaporated, uh disintegrated. I was thinking of the fact that she talked about getting another hat for a bit. You ever see the movie Groundhog Day with Bill, what's his name? Murray? Bill Murray. Murney. What? Bill Murray, I think. Actually, no, I have never seen Groundhog Day, but I get the premise. What? But it's like the best existential comedy ever. You should totally see it. I mean, I've seen... I've, I've read Live Di I've... I reject the title Live, Die, Repeat. That's a stupid title. I've seen Edge of Tomorrow and read All You Need Is Kill, the manga that it's based on. Actually, it's a book, but I read the manga adaptation by the Death Note manga artist. So I actually haven't read the original short story, I guess, or novella. But I've also watched uh, Russian... Russian Doll, I think it was called, with, the, with, with one of the best uh, actresses from Orange is the New Black. Or she keeps dying over and over again. It's a TV, it's a mini series. That was fun. It's like I, I get it, I get it. But uh, if you have a specific reference about how he cheats the system, I'd like to know. You should totally see it. But anyway, it was about a guy who's a total jerk to everyone. Oh, you mean every Bill Mur Bill Murray character, like the one where he's like a director for like Christmas or whatever, and then there's Ghostbusters and I haven't actually seen that many Bill Murray movies. He was a dick to that one fucking volleyball, too. Was, was that Bill Murray? That was Tom Hanks. I'm an idiot. Oh god, they're blurring together for me. That was Tom Hanks, right? Yeah, I'm wrong. Anyway. <laughs> it was a guy- it was a- about a guy who's a total jerk to everyone, and then he has this day, Groundhog Day, where he can't get out. Like, 
Every morning, no matter what he does during the day, he wakes up and it's Groundhog Day again. And at first he's like, this sucks and sulks a lot. And then he's like, this is awesome and he uses his knowledge of how the day will go to totally mess with everyone. Yeah. He also like learns skills like ice sculpting and playing an instrument or something, which would have taken so many loops, basically. Like by the end, he's learned everything about everyone in town and can surprise people with things like, hey, how's your novel coming? And they're all confused since they never told him about it, except they did last time he replayed the day. I guess the takeaway is that I could have said that Groundhog Day is happening and she would have taken to that way faster, apparently. Except then he goes back to this sucks because all, he is still stu stuck in the same day forever with people he knows intimately now, but who never remember him each morning when it resets. He kept doing all the things with the townsfolk and making changes, but ultimately he couldn't get out until he changed himself in some way. I wonder if this is sort of like that. Obviously, it isn't a perfect analogy, but maybe the choice you need to make to win isn't something you can do, but rather something you have to be? Oh, what's that? Look, the stars are changing color. And... Yeah. What would that mean, exactly? Oh, let's go through all the dialogue anyway. Why is this game so hard? I assume it's hard because it's trying to tell you, tell one of us something. Although I guess the other option is that you're just bad at games. But it sounds like you've already made it a ways in this one. If you've averted my death multiple times already. Maybe the problem is just that you're looking for the wrong thing? You got this far by saving and reloading all, all the mistakes you made, had a day, uh... Reloading away all of the mistakes until you had a day where you had done everything perfectly, right? And now we're here. She gestures up at the sky, still covered in shooting stars. Which honestly... Is still kind of perfect in its own way. She qui She's quiet for a moment. This actually reminds me of a different game now that I think of it. You ever play Chrono Trigger back on the Super Nintendo? I have not played Chrono Trigger. She's gonna just refer to, to media I haven't played or seen. It's ah, oh, it's like being on the receiving end. No, I've never played that. Oh, it was a great game. It was about some kids who build a time machine, see? And they go to the future and discover that the world is doomed. And it's all going to be eaten up by this giant alien. And everyone's miserable or dead. I did not know that this was the premise of Chrono Trigger. I knew that I figured it had a time machine in it, and a and a bunch of Dragon Ball characters, but not because it's that artist. But most of the game is you playing the kids, bouncing around through time, trying to figure out what they have to do to change the future, so that it doesn't end up all awful. It had an ending though. That reminds me a lot of this. Whenever you hit a game over, it would show you the world of the future, right as the disaster hit. Explosions spread across it, and you saw the planet from space slowly turning gray. And then it had this horrible alien sound, and words appeared, saying, But the future refused to change. It gave me chills as a kid, honestly. It was way more powerful than just a generic game over screen. Anyway, I was just reminded of it because, uh, yeah. All of this. You basically try and do the same thing. Fix the bad future that you know is coming. But it keeps refusing to budge. I'm not sure what to suggest. If you were playing Chrono Trigger, you'd go punch an alien until the future got better. That solution might not be applicable to this problem, though. You should really play that game sometime. It was really good. Oh, what's that? The stars are changing color. Ah. All right. Say nothing. For a few minutes, you just continue to ignore everything and watch the spectacle taking place in the sky above you. You have to admit it really is rather breathtaking. It's like watching fireworks, except there is no beginning and no end. Just a constant stream of fire across the night sky. Felicia is the first to break the silence. Have you ever thought about how stories work? A lot, actually. Oh, cool, me too. I used to think about them all the time. Not about particular stories, but about how they work as a medium, and why we love them so much. Have you ever thought about where a story lives? Like, where it 
I don't know how to really say this, but where it exists. I used to think that stories lived in, you know, books or in the mind of the person telling the story or whatever. But I think stories live in the brain of whoever's listening to it. When someone tells us a story, we go along with whatever they say, because that's the easiest thing to do. But what if they stopped telling us what to do? What if someone told you a story and then stopped before telling you how it ends? Is the story dead forever? Doomed to be forever unfinished? What if you like the story and want an ending? Even if you didn't start even if you didn't start it, are you allowed to finish it yourself? The John Green's book, The Fault in Our Stars, is explicitly about this question. It's in your head at the it's in your head at that point, right? You can do whatever you want with it. Who is going to stop you? And then what if they did finish telling you the story? But you just didn't like how it ended? Like Oh, let me tell you again about the next season of Game of Thrones. The next like four seasons. <laughs> what if you just decided that it ended a different way than they said? That the very act of storytelling is itself a deeply collaborative activity, right? They have to tell a story, and you have to play it out in your mind while they tell you. That's how it works, right? Yeah, but you totally can change it. Like, Neil Gaiman has done an adaptation of Norse mythology, which itself was just a series of vocal stories that are unreliable in most of their details because they were changed from person to person to begin with, and then they're poorly recorded, and then being retranslated so many years later, and then adapted again, and then adapted again, that like there's so many different versions of who Thor and Loki and all these other, other different people are and so on, but the very act of telling it your own way is kind of the thing. Like, Neil Gaiman actually says that in the for, the opening passage of the book, is like, some of, the, some of these things have been changed by me. Some of these things have been changed by time. And, like, that's just the nature of storytelling. Go ahead and tell more people these stories and change it yourself. Meanwhile, uh, we are now three movies deep where uh, Quentin Tarantino makes a movie about the past where he changes the ending. He's done it three times now. And it's specific, they're specifically revenge stories where he... He, he has a story in his mind about an ending he didn't like, so he writes a new ending that he does like. And he's, he's done three of those movies. What would happen if the audience rebelled and played a different story in their minds than the one that was being told? Would that story be any less valid or real? Are you suggesting that I just, what, imagine a better ending? I think that was spooky how it got quiet right when I said that. <laughs> couldn't have known. It couldn't have known. Yeah, I guess so. This is a game, right? If regular storytelling wasn't collaborative enough already, game storytelling kicks it up to a whole new level. Oh, this, I'm, I'm just, I'm always being reminded of things. There's some video essay that's vaguely about the subject of like life is strange is not the game we deserved or not life is strange is not the is not the game is I don't know if that's the title necessarily it just has the vague suggestion of like life is strange is a divergence from its own community. And I think it dealt with in particular the the game's kind of refusal to just let to just let Chloe and Max just be happy together. And it delves into the fan community and how there's just hundreds and hundreds of artworks and stories and so on and fan, fan adaptations and changes and so on that all kind of just like engage with the primary appeal for that proportion of the community at least of those games was like the connection of those two characters. And because the game kind of isn't interested in letting those characters be happy together. So the community just kind of takes over those characters like kind of claims ownership and then just makes a hundred different iterations of them being happy together in spite of the story. In a book or movie, the author can at least know that you'll read ev everything exactly as he wrote it. But fucking challenge accepted. <laughs> People have misread stuff all their lives. People have walked past uh, quest NPCs or not seen dialogue and so on. 
Someone writing a game, though, already has to see a ton of control of the player just to make it a game. The player can already make the game tell an entirely different story than the one the author envisioned, just in how they play, unless it's a walking simulator. Or anything hyperlinear. Maybe they make the hero die instead of save the day. Maybe they don't turn out to be a bad enough dude to save the president after all. So if you can do that, do you even need the game to tell you the rest of the story? If I'm in a story and the, and the ultimate controller of the story is you, then theoretically you should be able to just decide that it ends however you want. And it will. Maybe you're right. I'll give it a try. I have faith. You can make the story go wherever you want. All you have to do is stop listening to the game's plans for the story and start following your own. Although, if you're taking suggestions for the ending, I might suggest that I'd love to win the lottery and own a private tropical island. Just saying. So. You're still here. I'm still here. You've already been mangling the story by reloading, restarting, and undoing your choices after you see where they lead. Why are you getting cold feet now? What's the problem here? Seriously. Quit the game. Walk away. Write whatever ending you want for me in your head. Whatever you imagine by yourself will be every bit as real and valid as whatever the game is telling you to imagine. Why are we still here? Why haven't you just started writing your own ending yet? We have. I'm deciding where things go now. Oh. I guess I was expecting something more immediate and dramatic. I guess I'm not really in a position to criticize, though. So what happens now? I assume it's safe for me to go home now without fear of dying stupidly? That feels kind of anticlimactic. She walks over to her bike parked next to the statue on top of the hill. This, did the fucking statue fall on her? Somehow you're not even surprised when the statue starts to lean and then topples over directly onto her. <laughs> uh, there's been a lot of hints. I think this is it. I think the answer is that there is no solution. You just come to terms with the fact that you can never save her in the game. And so if you want to, if you want to save her, you just have to imagine a different ending. Whole cloth. Where she's fine. Ta-da! Although, the game's not that dedicated to killing her. Cause you can just fucking do this. I don't think we should meet up tonight. Oh my god, she's happy and she's having a great time when she goes off and meets somebody, the girl ever- Oh wait, the the dialogue change? Start seeing someone they're happy. Oh yeah, I, I'm skipping it too fast. Because it flows together. I think this actually is kind of the good ending a little bit. When you see her the next day, she's friendly enough, but there's a barrier between you now. You remain friendly acquaintances, she meets someone happy, someone happy, blah blah blah. Sometimes you wonder if things might have gone differently. Not often though, because you've seen a lot of the ways it could have gone instead. And all of them are worse. On the balance, maybe this isn't such a bad place to end the story after all. The, or at least Anne, end. I mean, that's objectively the best ending, uh, if we do any of the ones in-game, and you don't want to take the imagination route, because she clearly survives that one, and also I survived that one, and also the very act of going on a date seems to be somehow a catalyst for all the tragedies that happen, because in that one there's no mention of like an alien invasion and Cthulhu happening and so on. Which you think he'd make a mention of a little bit. Unless he just didn't go outside again and didn't notice. So, that was Save the Date. I think that's where we end this. That was fun. I had a good time. It was a dumb, silly thing. All meta, all meta commentary on the nature of storytelling and all that. But it also had kind of a, a fun pace to it. And I did not know what I was getting myself into. Like, when she died one minute into the game, I was very caught off guard. Uh, link in the description if you want to share this around to people and recommend it to people. 
the the game itself and its downloads. It's free. Probably should have mentioned that sooner if people want to check it out themselves. People are people can make their own damn decisions. They would have if they wanted to check it out. They would have checked it out. Yeah. See you guys next time.